This is Off Planet Radio. You're live. I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, wow. Uh, we're late getting to air because um, uh, apparently I can't stream. And um, Dave tells me I was hacked. Now, I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, we tried to go online on time tonight, and uh, it didn't happen. So I guess uh, we just deal with it. That <clears throat> There's been a, a number of, uh, actually, T- attacks, attempts on off pl- on off planet radio and on Wolf Spirit Radio. And sorry, I'm adjusting microphones here because I had to reconfigure my recording rig in order to be able to do this on Skype. And thanks, Dave, for routing me through. Um, <clears throat> gosh, I'm actually a little flustered. That almost never happens. It's twelve, 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 twelve. Did I say twelve? It's 12. Um, and you might have known that because we have a crazy, insane people with guns and malls. And it's Christmas time. Isn't that special? The occult holidays roll in. Um, <clears throat> that song that I opened up with, uh, the Greg Lake Father Christmas song, that will be the only Christmas song you will ever hear me play because it is an anti Christmas song. And. Uh, <clears throat> really goes to the heart of the whole thing, which is this ridiculous season that we go through that doesn't commemorate anything that I know of historically as being a religious holiday except for Saturnalia and uh, the Bacchanal in Rome. But then there's Solstice, which is coming up next week, and uh, that has a whole bunch of things going on with it. But what it really is, it's the end of the year balancing of books for all the New World Order corporations that they... uh, they profit take. And that's why you have Black Friday. And, you know, really, you, you look at the world and you go, you, you people really don't run things very well. Your business plan is to lose money for 11 months out of the year and then shove it up everybody's ass to go spend and charge credit cards so you have a profitable Christmas season. All run, by the way, by the same capitalist Zionist tr- group of reptiles and amphibians that have been running this planet for a long time and uh, there's your Christmas right there so if you celebrate it enjoy it but do it for the right reasons and if you're going out and racking up a lot of debt I'd have to ask you um, what brain cells are still connected a couple of things I got to talk about as well part of the challenge of doing independent radio is Expanding it, financing it, and um, making it somehow worthwhile to do on some level. Even just being able to pay bills is a challenge. And I don't like begging for them for money. I know Dave doesn't. And by the way, there are PayPal buttons on Dave's website. Feel free this time of year to kick a little bit back to Wolf Spirit Radio because this network is the alternative to the alternative in a lot of ways. And so, in attempting to line things up, I decided to take on endorsing and actually marketing a product called RNA Drops. Some of you know about this. Some of you have seen it on my website. And the truth of the matter is, I suck as a salesman, so I've not even done a testimonial. I've not done but one commercial that I've run a few times. But I'm happy to say that some people out there have uh, got a hold of the product and um, are using it so I will be doing more with that in the near future you'll hear what I have to say about the product and my endorsement of it and um, some of the other people that I've shared this product with over the last five months that I've been involved with it it's not an attempt to make anybody buy anything because quite frankly if this product doesn't speak to you you shouldn't use it it's um, it's not your run-of-the-mill health formulary but I will say this, um, we, deal, we, we deal with standards of things that have to do with the science that is set out by the pharmaceutical industries, and um, those standards have given you all of these deadly drugs that are on the market, and at the same time attempted to implement um, Codex Alimentarius to ban you from using natural substances. 
So you can see there's a backlash right now here in America because the Northwest United States, well, the whole West anyway, um, is legalizing marijuana, cannabis. And that is, in a way, the state's up yours government way of saying we're not going to let Codex Alimentarius intrude on our right to use substances that we believe are useful, healthy, and beneficial. And so cannabis was the first line of going against this global assault on uh, naturopathic and natural things that grow in the earth. So the science standards of the pharmaceutical establishment haven't worked out real well for us, and I think we need to seek alternatives. And one of those alternatives is a product that begins to rebuild your cellular system. And uh, I will talk more about that, but I at least wanted to get it on the record, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And it's not an attempt to really sell anybody anything, but it is also an attempt to uh, try and begin to finance things as sort of a, a, a bigger outreach. So <clears throat> that covers that. Then um, there's another subject that seems to not go away and in fact has really ramped up. And it has to do with um, the show I did a couple of weeks ago where I kind of did an impromptu rant on the blogger known as former White Hat operative, um, Kerry Cassidy, Project Camelot, and certain people at Revolution Radio, although not necessarily against the network itself. Um, but what has come out in the last few weeks is quite interesting because our friend Chris has stuck by his guns in that article exposing former White Hat operative and the Idlewild group as being Revolution Radio talk show host Michael Hemmingson has, I guess, taken on significant updraft. And uh, as of last night, Mr. Hemmingson has come forward and posted two comments on my blog at offplanetradio.com. You can go over and read those. And I will let those speak for themselves. I don't have anything to answer for. Um, uh, we put the information out there. There was as many as a half dozen of us that were working on this. And... Chris, when he published his article, basically paralleled research that several of us were doing on former White Hat Idlewild group postings. The issue is not about personalities, networks, who's successful, who's not successful. But it is about right and wrong. It's about integrity. It's about consistency. And... I'm going to play this clip, which was recorded uh, a little over an hour ago from Michael Hemmingson's radio show. He told us he was going to do this, so of course we're going to pay attention. And uh, here's what Michael Hemmingson had to say. You'll know who he's talking about. Tis moi. Uh, we're going to be talking about underground bases and stuff like that. But first, a uh, couple of things I wanted to talk about. Now, last Friday, Carrie Cassidy mentioned on her show the various attacks and accusations that led to her project recently and in the past, and that she's endured such for a number of years. This is part of the course of anything and anyone successful in all medias. Along with attacks come the threats. As Sean David Martin likes to say, if my life is being threatened, it must be Tuesday. Whining sessions, a la David Wilcock, need not apply. Now, I've experienced the same lately, and it's nothing new to me. Ever since I began publishing books, I've been attacked, stalked, harassed, and threatened by people who, when it all comes down to the real, are simply jealous. And I believe the attacks on Carrie are the product of a little green monster. There's a certain podcaster, radio host out there who has been on a tirade against Carrie and Project Camelot for some time, accusing her of conspiracies and black ops alignments and clandestine psyops and other gobbledygook. He's associated with the MK Ultra and targeted individual, inotribe subculture of paranoid schizophrenics and delusional lost souls, basically uh, mentally ill people who cannot accept their illness and look to Luciferians and DARPA CIA agents as the reasons behind their condition. Reading this guy's blog posts and listening to his YouTube rants, which there are many, I read between the lines and it becomes quite apparent that the real reason behind his ire is that he is just 
also carries large audience base, and the fact that his own is a mere fraction of hers. He fumes that tens of thousands listen to her while only a junior high school auditorium's worth of people tune into him. Now, while Carrie doesn't reach the masses uh, that Coast to Coast does, Project Camelot comes in second place with the biggest off media audience, both in size and a certainly a road guest interviewed. Now, there are a number of radio hosts out there who don't, do not like this, and they go on and on about it. This is nothing new. In Art Bell's heyday, diminutive the many to the radio voices across the country and world would attack him, and they were venomously jealous of his quick success and grab of affiliates and ad revenue. Sean David Martin has and still does experience the same, but he takes it in stride, and he knows it's all part of the territory. But what does it say about a radio host who continually attacks another in blogs and podcasts and shows? That is obvious. But instead of stating the obvious, the attacks are couched in rhetoric of blame. Oh, you've treated my friends bad. You deny certain truthers to have a voice. You must be working for the alphabet soup boys. You have a nefarious agenda. You're a lizard person, etc., etc., blah, 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 yada, 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 ad nauseum, and so on. So it goes. Well, there's Michael Hammickson's greed on his take on me and what I've written and what I've broadcast for the last, I guess, 18 months. And I have to ask the question that, you know, jealousy would be gauged, I guess, by um, your conduct. So I put my work out there. First off, he says there's numerous videos attacking Kerry Cassidy. There's actually only two. I did one that was an eye to eye with white, with, uh, with former white hat and then the one that I put up a few weeks ago. So there's two videos there. There are a number of articles where I'm critical of Project Camelot and Carrie Cassidy. Um, going back to over a year ago when I took sides with Michael Vara and Gary Levere over Richard ha Hoagland's handling of suppressed Mars photos that Gary had discovered and the stalking and Stalking doesn't even begin to cover what Gary reported. That was never rebutted by Hoagland, by the way. And Carrie's handling of it. That's all documented on the website with quotes. Um, I am not jealous of Carrie Cassidy's audience because I don't want her audience. I've seen it. I'm much happier with the small group of people that I have on the small network that I'm on. And quite frankly, I've considered the last few months giving this up completely and just going back to doing podcasting. It is because I love this network and because I enjoy live radio that I'm doing this at all. Because I ran for years without doing any kind of network or broadcast radio. If I wanted Carrie's audience, I would, I would use Carrie's style and I would do what Carrie does. I don't do that. I have a different message. I have a different method. I have a different audience. And I will settle for what I have happily with all the terms and conditions that I've spelled out many times. I mean, if you wanted to run for popularity, you wouldn't make the moves I've made. I suck at promoting myself. I am lousy at social networking. I am handicapped in terms of interacting with people on a personal level sometimes. I have thrown people off my chat room, told people not to listen to me. I've pretty much done anything you could do to discourage having a large market, including pissing off some pretty high-level people. Not only that, but my server was hacked tonight, and there's been a lot of resistance and interference at certain times when I've done work with certain people. Michael Hemmingson's comments tonight mask something else. It is the confessions that he makes in the two comments that he placed on my website, where he acknowledges that he knows who is behind the former White Hat and Idle Wild groups. <coughs> And I think if you wanted to address in substance the content of Michael Hemmingson's little screed there tonight, you would have to look at the fact that he didn't deal with the substance of what he put on those posts or the fact that everybody has suddenly got their panties in a wad over me putting up this YouTube video. Obviously, we have shaken some foundations with these people. Obviously, 
they're a little worried about the fact that it went this far being exposed. Well, this is just the surface. What's been exposed so far publicly is only what we've allowed to be released publicly. And the former White Hat and the Idlewild group are all fronts. I don't know who Michael Hemmingson is. He goes to great lengths to tell us how talented a writer he is. We've connected him to Louis Kahn Nin, who is a writer doing really, frankly, trashy porno novels. So if you're basing a literary career on writing porno and some, uh, let us just say, not all that well-known literary works, Michael, okay, <laughs> but the standard is still the standard. And the fact is, I don't want Carrie's audience. I'm not jealous. I will call a spade a spade. And because I'm not willing to sit back and watch as certain people are humiliated, intimidated, stalked, discredited in terms that are not acceptable, I'll say what I have to say. I said a long time ago, I would hang this former white hat around Carrie Cassidy like a bad dress. Well, Carrie, enjoy your new dress, sweetheart. It's Christmas time. You're wearing it now. And if you want to deal with the facts and the substance, then we can rock and roll. Otherwise, this stays on the record. Mr. Hemmingson, you haven't denied anything in substance of your complicity with former White Hat operative and the Idlewild group, so I have to assume that all the facts that you presented stand in evidence. And I do have somebody on the line with me tonight, and uh, I'm going to trust he wants to speak as well. And uh, that would be Duncan O'Finian. Good evening, Duncan. Am I on? You're on. Oh. I just got shocked. <laughs> I didn't do that. I know, I know. I'm. I hope not. Anyway, I'm sparking tonight. Did you say something about cannabis when you opened the program? I did. Yes, I pointed out that um, right now the Western states uh, are basically uh, almost in chain fashion um, legalizing marijuana. Michael, buddy, go to one of those states quickly. Because I sit and I listen to about 20 minutes of you reading off of handwritten pages. And, dude, I swear, it sounds like you've, you had about two pounds of cannabis. I mean, the guy just, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I had to go to the bathroom about halfway through it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what else to, to say about about anything except for what you said. I mean, that his little speech was a total misdirection of facts. There is no freaking jealousy involved here. Um, I mean, let me just throw this out that, you know, a lot of people don't know. Uh, Miranda and I have had movie offers thrown at us that we could have made a really good payday and we turned it down because it wasn't about the money. They wanted to take our stories and screw with it, and we won't, we won't have that. And so we turned down a couple of really good paydays. So this is not about being jealous of someone's success, you know, someone's money. This is all just total BS, you know, trying to, to redirect the facts to make your own self sound a little bit better, and it's just not working. And I got another little suggestion for you, Mikey. Change your ISP address every once in a while. <laughs> because they show up. When you posted to Randy's blog that you were going to do your little <clears throat> reading tonight, you should have changed the ISP <clears throat> because it matches perfectly with the ISPs from south of the border down in Mexico of all the threatening emails that you wrote me. How many times you got to be busted, man? I'm, I, uh, go ahead, Duncan. No, no, no. no you go ahead. I, was just I want to back up on the conversation because the part of this that bothered me wasn't me. 
I really don't give a shit what anybody thinks about me. And I really don't care if they call me jealous, if they, they think I have a puny audience. You know, if you think I have a puny audience, that's an insult to my audience. Because I don't need 10,000 people on my show or my website. I have a great audience. And I actually talk to my audience. But here's the thing. When you begin to cast aspersions against people who came forward to talk about ritualistic abuse, to talk about mind control, to talk about MK Ultra, at the risk of their lives, literally in some cases, when you impugn the integrity of people who have a long-standing record of both having integrity and also speaking out the truth even beyond the boundaries of their own past, as have Duncan and Miranda, Sarah Stanga, um, I could get down a list of people that I've interviewed just in the last year who put their asses on the line to tell a story that, quite frankly, off air, sometimes made them weep. These were people that came forward with hard truths that people needed to hear. And in nearly every case, these people had a healing effect on other people out there who needed to hear their stories. I have spent two years delving into the dark corners of the paranormal and delving into the hearts and minds of people who have been subjected to horrible trauma. And the former White Hat website from day one was a setup and it was a hit on a certain group of people that were not approved to be part of the so-called alternative media community. The blog posts that were posted on the two websites specifically, former White Hat and Idlewild Group, were nothing more than slander, lies, abuse, and gang stalking in a lot of cases. And that is something that each one of you who's been involved with this website are going to have to wear. And I'm hanging it on you. And until somebody comes back with factual refutation of the hard evidence that Chris amassed, that we hold right now, and that some other people have contributed as well, it stands in argument. So a misdirected argument on jealousy is not going to serve any conversation real well, because you can't hurt me. I'm not sitting here whining about my audience, or whining about what Project Camelot or anyone else does. There are actually people out there that I respect. There are people in Revolution Radio that I respect and like. There is work that has been done in the alternative media that I consider to be inspirational, including the early work of Project Camelot. I do not find it inspiring when clowns like Mr. Hemmingson, apparently, take on endless lists of false names and false identities to do hit pieces on their enemies. Mr. Hemmingson, you have a bigger problem than jealousy. You have a heart that's cold and dark. And not only that, but that very little speech that you put out tonight indicated how much pride you carry about yourself. So we're real aware, Mr. Hemmingson, that you think yourself a literary genius and apparently also a guitar shredder. Well, good on you. But the bottom line for me is that I judge people by their hearts and by their actions and by the amount of light that they attempt to put out into the world and not the amount of shit that they want to carry across the internet to waste and savage other human beings. I, I think I'm done now, Duncan. <clears throat> you know, dead air is a no-no. <laughs> okay, how's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. I figured okay. you were dropping out. There you go. Um, you know, if you want to push the literary side of it, we own a publishing company. I mean, you know, it's not that hard anymore. <laughs> no, it's called Kindle, actually. Yeah. Well, no, we actually own yes our own legitimate publishing company. We can publish, you know, as many books as we want. We just don't have, have time to write. Um, y you're right. The, 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 the whole Crab Hat, Isle of Wild group, the, the whole thing uh, was – put in motion some time ago, but I think that it was also brought into conception in the idea form much longer than that. 
I think it was a uh, fail-safe program that a certain group of people had put together a long time ago to use against a small group if they couldn't, uh, shall we say, buy a couple of them off. Yeah. We're not for sale. If I wanted to be rich, I could be living in a castle in Bavaria tomorrow. I don't care about that. So, you you know, Michael, your little tirade from reading, reading for 30 minutes is just total bullshit. Somebody in the chat room asked the name of your publishing company, so go ahead and put that out. <laughs> Gray Wanderer Publishing. <laughs> I think, you know, I think this whole experience, and quite honestly, it's been stressful. And Dave knows this, you know this, that I've kind of been going, man, do I even want to come back and do this anymore? I mean, I have a life, I have a family, I have other things I enjoy doing. But I really felt like this year was a high water mark for me because I got to do live radio again. And it's been fun. But this part of it's not been fun. And anybody that thinks that I've enjoyed spending endless hours doing research to write articles to slam people is wrong. I've actually a couple of times gone out and tried to disprove my own theories about things. Even about Project Camelot and former White Hat. And it's not because um, I doubt myself. It's because... I think everybody has to test their own theories and test their own heart on things. I would love to leave this whole thing behind. I don't really give a crap about what Project Camelot does. Um, they can contribute to the work, uh, continuing to do whistleblower testimony. That's great. I mean, I personally can't eat a full plate of that all the time. I need other things to balance it out. But that's great. But there's a lot of drama right now, even outside of this, this former white hat thing that's going on in other scenes as well. There's a lot of background noise, so to speak, that's kind of an indication right now that things are about to pop. And as the temperature goes up, the pressure gets greater, and people start to freak out. And a lot of what I see right now is I see a lot of people freaking out. And I know you're seeing this too, Duncan. It's almost like random acts of insanity. You look at your email and you go, does it get any worse? I mean, what moron is emailing me now? What idiot is posting comments? It's like they almost can't even contain the insanity in themselves. And I'm not talking about people coming out of projects or abuse situations. I'm talking about fully functional human beings who all of a sudden have just slid over onto the other side of the abyss. So we're lucky to be on the air at all tonight, frankly, because it didn't look like it was going to happen. And uh, I don't understand what happened. We test all the equipment. Um, there's been a lot of interference. Uh, especially with my website and with my shows for about three months now. And I'm not going to be paranoid about that. It's just whatever it is. But we know that in the background right now, um, a lot of people would like it if I and some other people went away. We're very uncomfortable truth for some people who have high-level positions to protect. <laughs> yeah, I... I <sighs> For I can I can only speak 100% for myself, 99% for Miranda, but I think I can say this for the four of us, including you, know, you and, and, and Dave. It's never been about ego for us. It's never been about needing to be on top with all of this. Um, you know, I have no ego to grind with all that. Now, I'm an asshole. I admit that. I, yeah, use, that to my, I use that to my advantage. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of like in, in doing a job. Show me a better way to do it. Take the lead, man. I'm right behind you. Go for it. It's not about trying to be that one upmanship. You know, you got, you're up on the third rung of the ladder. You got somebody coming up on the second rung of the ladder. You got to find a way to kick them off so they can't get 
get up next to you. Well, that's what a lot of what's been going on with all this crap. And it's ridiculous. Who has a patent on the truth? The truth's the truth. It doesn't make a difference who puts it out there. If it's true, it's true. And here's another side to that as well. We don't always agree with each other. I mean, when I say we, uh, collectively, that embraces a lot of different people in different situations. And I mean, Duncan, you and I and Miranda have had opportunities to sit down and be eye to eye with each other, touch skin, break bread together. We know each other in the 3D world, but we knew each other before that 3D world as well. Right. But we don't always agree with each other over things. And the truth is that the truth is a reality expressed by individual people. And there's a richness in that. And I'm not, I have not been willing to suppress it even when I've disagreed with it. There have been guests that have come on this show that I didn't agree with. And there's been a couple of guests where I just went, well, they're not going to be back again to be heard saying that on this show, but they got to say it this time because I don't bushwhack people. I don't bring people on to disembowel them publicly on the air. And so there is the ability to coexist with people of different understandings, different truths. But what I heard in Michael Hemmingson's show tonight was a disavowal of other people's truths. That's what I saw on the former White Hat blog and the Idlewild Group blog as well. Selectively, some people were discredited based not on knowledge or truth, but on prejudice and on bias and on the fact that those people do not fit into select groups of people who are part of this tight little circle that they have. Mm hmm Yeah. Exactly. And, no, you're right. And collectively with, with our little group, no, we don't always all get along. My God, me and, me and Dave have argued and, and fit and screamed and cussed at each other. <laughs> and it, we love every minute of it. It's who we are. I have something I'm, I'm wanting to go with here, but I haven't slept in about a month. Um, it's, it's, it's one small, simple word. It's called respect. We all have the utmost respect for each other. And we have the utmost respect for the human race. These people that are involved in this little group have no respect whatsoever for anyone, not even themselves. These are people, in my opinion, would not only sell their own soul and most likely have, but they'd toss their own grandmother under a bus to get one step ahead. I can't deal with people like that. And quite frankly, they're not worth dealing with. So you just put them down. We're sitting here, and this isn't a called holiday, by the way. Um, it seems like this show has, I don't know what it is with Wednesdays this year, but we hit uh, occult dates all over the calendar this year because it's their, these are their dates. You'll know them by their fruits. And, well, there you go. You've got a shooter in a mall last night, yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, we're coming up on the, on the uh, I guess the end of the Mayan calendar cycle. And by the way, James Horak will be here the next hour, and he's got some things to talk about. But it is the expectation right now that we're in for a sharp shift. And you and I talked about this, Duncan, and nobody knows what's coming because what's coming will not be what you expect it to be. Right, right. Um, and we, we talked about... Uh this long time ago, um, like the mall shootings and all that, man, that is just going to continue to increase exponentially. We ain't seen nothing yet. No, I mean, and, the country's armed to the teeth right now. Gun sales yeah. went up 400% after Obama was reelected. I know. 
And it's just going to continue on and on and on. And going just a little bit away from that, because it reminded me of something. One of the lowest things that these people did in their postings was to try and tie me in with some of these shootings. I can, you know, I've been accused of a lot of things, some true, some not, and that's fine. But guys, do you have any clue what you did to those people's families out in Colorado and up in Wisconsin? Do you have any clue what you did to their families by put by posting all this crap? Because you know darn well they read it. It's it, it it's beyond ridiculous. It's beyond sad. And it just I don't know. These people they're just they're not worth the air they breathe. Well, here again, you know, you've got planted or in some way seeded opposition in putting these kind of memes out into the Internet. Uh, the Internet is not just a technological landscape. It's a spiritual and vibrational landscape as well. And I'm very aware of this, and I've written articles about it, about the fact that this Internet is a neural network. It is connecting an entire globe cybernetically. So the reverberations that come from putting out allusions that somebody, specifically in this case you, Duncan, was the second shooter in the Colorado movie theater, creates a huge wave of all kinds of pulses out into the Internet. And mm -hmm. this is done deliberately. I mean, look, the, the, the Defense Department gave us the Internet. Well, they seeded it to us for a season. And they understood this a long time ago. There were people writing about it as far back as a priest named Chardon, and even Emmanuel Velikovsky wrote about this, that the day was going to come when we were going to be jacked in. We were going to basically be cybernetically connected to each other. So on one level, we're still dealing with mind control, and now it's mind control on the level of people who have the ability to uh, cybernetically cast very large rocks into a, a body of water, create ripples and muddy the water so that nobody can see the truth that lies underneath the surface. Hmm. Misdirection. Total misdirection. And if you blend truth with your lies, all you've done is you have prostituted the truth. If you do five truths and one lie, that lie basically voids and nulls all the truth that you put out. And if your integrity is not behind it, if you don't stand behind your people, if you think it's funny that somebody like former White Hat continues to do the kind of things that he did, they did, whoever, um, you don't have integrity either. Now I'll speak to Kerry Cassidy again and say, Kerry, you thought this was real funny. You thought it was humorous, and you went out of your way to let people know by posting the links, promoting the website, dropping little comments into your radio show. This was really funny, wasn't it? Yeah, it was real fucking funny. Well, I didn't think it was funny, and I'm sitting here watching people who were traumatized by what FWH did. In one case... Sarah Stanga was completely shaken down when she came into the U.S. And White Hat claims responsibility for that. Well, that means that you endorse the violation of a person to enter this country legally? Are you kidding me? And you think you stand for freedom and truth? Do you think it's funny to slander people as witches, as doubles in shootings. You see, I'm not inaccurately quoting anything. I have the entire former White Hat website on my computer downloaded. This ain't going away. Every post is there. If anybody wants to refute the facts, 
because Louis Kahn then dumped his entire website after we exposed it. Fortunately, we we had a Google cache of that as well. How unfortunate. So yeah, I got a damn good printer. When <clears throat> when these people begin to try and sanitize the truth, there is um there's technology here that lets all of us kind of level the playing field. So the inconvenient truths don't go away. The worst thing you can say about the articles I wrote is that they preserve truths in their time. And I haven't changed it, I haven't altered it, and I ain't taken it down. And it is archived, just like Chris's article is archived on a PDF file, on a distant server in a land far away. Because... <clears throat> If somebody decides to hack Chris's site or sanitize it in some way, there's still a record of that. And I think that's important. So I stand by what I write. I stand by what I say. I stand by my friends. I stand by this network. And if you want to counter what we've had to say so far in this show and in previous comments I've made, you better come with substance because accusing me of jealousy, really? That's just mind rape. Thank you. I like somebody walking through my mind telling me what I think and what I feel. But you see, that really is the strategy of diversion artists, isn't it? <laughs> nice. This is kind of a bloodletting. And, you know, it's rough. And I didn't plan it. And uh, the show was almost cut off at its knees tonight. But that's okay. Um... Because I want to get it out of the system. This is how you basically get rid of toxins. You get rid of toxins by getting them out of your system, and then I'm getting them away from you, which means you kind of have to go flush the toilet. So in effect, for me, that's what this is about tonight. I wasn't planning on this until Hemmingson posted on my site. I really didn't plan to make a comment about it, because I figure it's, it speaks for itself. So I don't have a script. I'm not reading from a page. I've been accused of that, too. Um, I wish I had time to write copy, but I don't. And I got index cards here um, with little notes how I can't even read my own handwriting anymore. <laughs> so um, that, was, that was my show prep for tonight was three index cards with things I wanted to talk about. And like David Letterman, at the end, you just take them and you throw them up in the air, and they're gone. Was that Letterman or Carson that did that? I can't remember anymore. So, um, I am watching the chat rooms too, by the way. <clears throat> uh, and you guys are doing great in there. Um, if you have questions, caps for uh, questions. But uh, I thought for this hour, because I actually was probably not even going to do a show tonight. Um, Dean Clifford was supposed to be here, and he's disappeared. Um, and I know that because he was scheduled to do another radio show, and he didn't do that radio show either. So I would say keep Dean in your intentions and energies. I wanted him to kind of be the uh, other side of the bracket on the show that I did last week. So it's kind of fun, isn't it? Um, I'm liberated because I have no safety net and no script, and um, we almost didn't go on the air tonight anyway. Um, so it's like we'll just kind of go through this. But uh, Duncan had come on basically to, uh, I guess, morally support me, and he's been kind enough to jump in. And it's we talked about this privately because um, we knew that Michael Hemmingson was going to make this whatever. Actually, the content of his speech is written out on the website if you look at it. <laughs> Um, that's really interesting how that works out. But, um, you know, so he said what he had to say, and I've said what I have to say. And this ain't a pissing contest. It's not a pissing contest, by the way, with um, Revolution Radio either. I don't really know the people behind Revolution Radio, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I would say that based on what we've presented and based on what Mr. Hemmingson posted on my website, that um, they should probably look at what was written and ask some questions. I don't know what diligence they've done on this or if they even care to do it. But um, 
The bottom line is if you continue to support somebody once you have proof or evidence that they have been dishonorable, then I think you kind of paint yourself into that same corner. And you should deal with it, just like we're dealing with it now. Well, and you said it earlier, too, that there, you know, as we talked about, and we, you know, we all know, there's a lot of things out there that we have not gone public with yet. And that scares the bejeebies out of some of these people. And all I'm going to say about that is timing is everything. Yes. Yeah, sometimes you keep your powder dry. Oh, yes. And you always put a couple of bullets back. Yeah. So that's kind of the clean up the tail for, um, I guess, what uh, we would call this current round of uh, the war for truth. And everybody gets to choose and decide where they want to be in this battle. And it's not a battle of arms. It's a battle of minds and hearts. And morally, I would say right now that the controllers won this round by continuing to divide. But that's not really my problem. Um... We don't make allies out of people who have made it very clear that they're hostile. That, by designation, is an enemy. So this is not about us dividing some community. Right now, I'd say the community is very fractured. My advice is for people to form communities in very small groups and trust no one. Because as the days go on, it's going to get hairier, and you're going to need some people that got your back, and you're going to... Um, need to be able to trust the people around you and the information that you're given. And large groups don't work that way. They're easily infiltrated. They're easily compromised. And they're subject to a, a hive mind that sort of rises up when a lot of people are vying for position in the group. And leaders routinely whack their own people because they will not allow their lessers, I guess, to challenge them. So I guess in a sense I'm viewed as a lesser and I've challenged someone, but I'll stay the small fish. It's sometimes easier to hide behind rocks when you're a small fish. And uh, Duncan, anything else you want to wrap up at before we take the hour break here, my friend? No, I don't think so. I, um, I think it's all been summed up excellently. And we'll see what the next round ha happens in, in the next round. Okay, so uh, having thrown all standards of professional broadcasting out the, out the uh, <laughs> window in this hour, we have James Horak coming back in a, in, in a few minutes. I'm going to try and reset some things here, grab a drink of water, and uh, visit the stable. Duncan, thanks for coming on tonight, my friend. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure, dude. Okay. okay, great. This is Off Planet Radio. Radio.